been 30 years since your Oscar win. Does it even feel like it's been 30 years? No, because people constantly reminded me that I got it 30 years ago. And I see Oscar every day, so that makes me happy. When is the last time you've, you know, actually watched that moment where Denzel Washington says your name? It's been a while, you know. I remember things about it. And the Oscar goes to Whoopi Goldberg. <laughs> Brother. Ever since I was a little kid, I've wanted this. You don't know. <laughs> My brother's sitting there, he says, thank God we don't have to listen to anymore. You can do it now. I want to thank everybody who makes movies. I come from New York. As a little kid, I lived in the projects. And you're the people I watched. You're the people wanted, made me want to be an actor. I'm so proud to be here. I'm proud to be an actor, and I'm gonna keep on acting, and thank you so much. What stuck out to you watching that? How good I looked. <laughs> I looked really good. Hair was cool, dress was cute. My brother, who's no longer with us, that, that was great to see him, to see him and my daughter. You said you loved your hair, you loved your dress. What was the look you wanted to achieve that night? I'm really simple. I know what I want. I wanted a black dress that looked good and that fit me in my form. I just wanted to look glamorous for me because I couldn't look glamorous like other people look glamorous. You know, I had a, I, I wasn't thin and I wasn't a, a white lady. So I had to find my own style and glamour. And, you know, in the, in the years that I'd been going to the Oscars, uh, since the first one. I loved going because it was fun for me and I got to present and I got a lot of lip for some of my outfits, but I loved them, you know, I loved them and I had a good time with them. And so for me, this was just go and have a good time and look good. Go be you. My mom's home, everybody's watching. My mom did not want to come because she felt that she came to the first one and didn't want me to see her looking disappointed or upset. So she said, I'm going to, I'm going to stay home. And then I won. <laughs> and I won. was like, of course, the day you don't come. I remember things about it. Like I remember looking out and seeing actors that I grew up loving and who I was lucky enough to know. Um, and then I saw my partners in crime, all the women who were nominated with me because we made a pact that whoever won had to take everybody else out to dinner. And with the permission of the Oscars, I was allowed to get chocolate gold Oscars created and given to the women. To me, it was a, a great celebration of time and we all did really good work. and. Any one of us could have taken it. Anybody could have taken it. That year, you had won the BAFTA, the Saturn Award, NAACP, the Golden Globe, really all the awards. Were you still surprised to win the Oscar? No, 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 no. Because I, I, you know, I believe I won several things when I did Color Purple, too, and we didn't win. So it was, you know, what I learned instantly that first time is that no one knows. And I know that better than anybody. No one knows. Because you can win everything over here, but it doesn't mean that you're going to win here. No, you got to just keep yourself together. And then my kid said, Ma's you! <laughs> I was like, what? <laughs> ah, okay. Pop up. Whoopi Goldberg. <laughs> the issue always was, will I make any sense can I do it before they play me off? Will I remember to thank the people I needed to thank? I have to thank the people at Paramount. I have to thank Jerry Zucker for taking the time he took before he decided to use me because it, it meant he was sure that it was for me. I had to thank Patrick Swayze, who's a stand-up guy, and went to them and said, I want to do it with her. I want to thank Demi. A friend of mine comes to my house and I said, why do you look so for Clem? She said, girl, I just came from this audition. Every black woman 
<laughs> Living or Dead was there. And I came back and I called my agent, Ron Meyer. I said, um, is there a, is there a, like this, a part that's happening, auditions happening for women? Cause my friend just said she was at this audition with every black woman on the planet. He said, well, they don't actually want to see you. And I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> I was like, what did I do? I, I, I didn't do anything. He said, they feel that, you know, cause I was just sort of coming into my mystical actor power thing. They felt that I would take people out of the film if they saw it was mm -hmm. me. So I went on and, and Sissy Spacek and I were shooting a film called Long Walk Home down in Montgomery. And so I'm in the middle of shooting that and I get a call to call my agent and I call him. He says, well, you remember that movie you, you asked me about and I told you they didn't want to see you? I said, yeah. He said, well, they want to see you now. I said, what happened? He said, well, I think the guy that they've chosen really said to them, I would think this would be perfect for her. So Patrick and Jerry Zucker flew down to Montgomery, Alabama for Patrick and I to, to meet. And then I got the call like a month, maybe a month later saying, if you want the job, it's yours. Did it feel like Ghost was gonna be something special while you were there? No, as a matter of fact, we weren't sure what the hell we were shooting. <laughs> Patrick and I, I, and I'd have to like, I'd be talking to him just like we're talking now, but I'd have to talk to him like this. And he'd say, you know, <laughs> you know, this is the dopiest thing we've ever done. I said, I think so, you know, but maybe we can pull it off. But, uh, and to me the same way, I don't think any of us thought that it was, going to have this kind of impact and then the um <laughs> the box office numbers started coming in and everybody was like do we have back <laughs> does anybody notice anybody have back on this movie because i'd like some you also made history as only the second black woman to win the oscar after hattie mcdaniel what did that mean to you then and how has that feeling changed for you in the years since I felt pretty good about it because I thought and hoped that it would not be so long until mm. the next one. And of course we were lucky and it wasn't. All the women, you know, I, I think of Diane Carroll and I think of Pearl Bailey and I think of Dorothy Dandridge and I, I think of Butterfly McQueen, Hattie McDemme, you think about Juanita Hall and all of these women who did great amazing work that was overlooked in part because people felt, well, if you're playing a servant, you're not really acting. A, like, I'm sorry, what? Well, actually it is because in the words of the amazing Hattie McDaniel, no disrespect, but I, I'd rather be playing one than being one. And just getting people to come to the fact that this is not, this should not be a unique thing. This should be part of what happens if you're an actor. It shouldn't be because, oh my God, it's finally a black actor or it's finally an Asian actor. Or it's fine. It should be, oh my God, they were great in that film. I'm glad things are getting better and they're getting better for everybody, not just for people of color, but for everybody, for women, for trans folks, for non-binary people. It's, it's just, it's getting better because we're actors. That's, that's what this is about. These are acting accolades. You were host the year that Halle Berry became the first black woman to win the Best Actress Oscar. What was it like having a front row seat to that moment? It was kind of wonderful. I had a little tear in my eye because I always wished it would be me, but you know, you can't always get what you want, but sometimes you get what you need. So I had no complaints really because I'd done that. I, I had done that too. It's quite odd that it's been a while between Hallie and whoever's coming up next. Looking at the, the spate of films this year, I think it's getting better. Look at Regina King. She's everything that you want in a director. I look at Jordan Peele. He's everything I want to see in a writer director. Anthony Mackie and Leslie Odom. It is getting better. And in part that has to do with people writing movies where not just white people are, you know, where you're not the side thing, 
black movies, you know, unless they were exploitation films, were not thinking of us. And sometimes they would, but you know, it took a while to get somebody to make movies with black stories. You'd see one or two every now and then, but it was necessary for people to go, oh, you know what? I need to write this. I need to write this because otherwise I'm not going to see it. When it comes to hosting the Oscars, of course, you've done it four times, 94, 96, 99, 2002. What does it take to be successful at it? Bruce Valanche and I, he'd say, what's on your mind? And I'd say, blah, 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 blah. And he'd make me a monologue. It was brilliant and still is brilliant. And I want to put a rumor to rest. I did not get this gig because I'm Sidney Poitier's daughter. <laughs> you know, there's been a lot of speculation. I got it because I seem to cross so many ethnic and political lines. I'm an equal opportunity offender. Do you have a favorite moment from one of those openings? It goes back and forth between coming out of the ceiling and coming out as Queen Elizabeth and then reading the next day how I was wearing white face in order to counter people, you know, talking about me and blackface. It's like, did you not see the movie? Idiot person who wrote this. Did you not see that Queen Elizabeth had white face? What it has, and then you realize, you know what? Yes, okay, whatever you said, sir. Just all kinds of things going on on stage that were fun and allowed me to do things that the guys didn't do with change wardrobe, change costumes, new jewelry, and talk about the movies in a way that they couldn't really do it. They did it differently. It's not that they couldn't do it. I just did it differently. I had on a giant, I think 18 karat diamond and we we're doing, I think it was Beloved. I'll never be hungry again. <laughs> just ridiculous stuff, just ridiculous stuff and having fun and making it about the fun of the movies, you know? Whoever the host is, whoever the guide is that takes you down has to love the movies, you know? They have, because they have to keep you engaged. And the, the best person at that was Billy. He said to me when I took the job the first time, he said, listen, there's only two things you have to remember. It's not your show, it's their show. Second thing you have to remember is they will love you for five minutes and then they want to know, did I win? So <laughs> keep it moving. He said, you know, keep your eyes open because there's all kinds of stuff going on. He said, you will have a great time if you do those three things. And that's exactly what I did. And I had a great time. And every subsequent time had fun too. The critics didn't love me, but I never cared much what the critics thought, you know, as long as people had a good time. He was the host that 1991 year when you won. Yes. Did that make that more special? But it was like two of my brothers were, were there, Billy and my brother Clyde. You know, it would have been brilliant if Robin had been in the audience. Then the three most important men in my life would have been there. But Robin was watching, so that was helpful. Um, Billy is one of those people who you know, he loves cinema. He loves the movies when he would talk about what was happening or you know he'd have some comment about a film you knew he knew what he was talking about you know and that's what you want you want you want to laugh comfortably because you know this person isn't making it up they they know the move they know something and they've imparted a, a piece of that to you it's it's gorgeous it's gorgeous because there's nothing worse than a three-hour deadly show you want to have those moments where people say, I'll never forget that, yeah. you know? And if you can have that in your Oscar show, you're, you're, you're there as far as I'm concerned. Of course, you've been a part of the Oscars many times since you last hosted in 2002, but would you do it again? I would, because I love it. I mean, it, it, to me, you know, I think you have to be part babysitter and part psychiatrist and psychologist when you're up there because you want to put people at ease because they're all nervous did i win oh my god what am i going to do if i won? you know oh how's my face i hope my face is okay you know it's you want to say you know you're fine and it's okay to look disappointed you just can't do you can't give anybody the middle finger but you can look disappointed 
when I think about EGOT, I think about that episode of 30 Rock. Why was that an episode you wanted to sign on for? Well, because I wanted to be in 30 Rock. <laughs> so when I got the invitation to come and play with Tracy Morgan, it was like, great. And then he started talking. I said, what, what are you talking about? He said, you got one. You're, you're one. What does that mean? He said, you don't know? I said, no. <laughs> I've never heard this before, this term. And that was the first time I was made aware that I was, I was an EGOT winner. All these awards I got, I got for projects I believed in. It's got to come from the heart. And then the awards will follow. That's good advice, Whoopi. Mm -hmm. You know, obviously Oscar's home safe now, but should we recount the the, the harrowing experience Oscar had? <laughs> yes. They can get tarnished from people, you know, feeling them all the time and, you know, hoisting them up. Because every time somebody comes to my house, they have to hoist the Oscars. So over the years, he gets tarnished and you can have him refurbished. You can't just send it to the refurbished place. You have to send it back to the Academy. They then send it to the secret headquarters of the, of the refurbishing people. So I did that. And month went by, second month went by, oh third month went by, fourth month went by. And I said to Tom, who is my, my work partner, I said, we sent the Oscar, right? I, I did do that. He said, yeah, they got it. I said, well, it hasn't come back. He said, what do you mean it hasn't come back? He said, you don't have, I said, no, I, I don't have it. So he called and said, do y'all still have her? <laughs> and they were like, what? What do you mean it hasn't come back? <laughs> That's what they oh said to him too. And then they called the refurbishing place and they said, well, we never got it. What do you mean you never got it? I said, no, we never got it. And so they did a little tracing and found it. And so, yeah, he was gone for a while. So he was found at the Ontario airport and you released a statement saying he'd never leave the house again. Can you see him from here? He lives on the third floor, all the way upstairs. Does he live with his compatriots? Yes, he does. Yes, he does. When you think about those four trophies, is there one that was more surprising to win? They're all shocking to win. Listen, I mean, because I, you know, I've won for being producer. I won for being an actor. Uh, I've won for spoken word. They're like a career because they all mark something that I've done. Which achievement would you say you are the most proud of? The fact that I'm still here. I didn't fade away. I didn't disappear. I didn't, you know, I'm still here and still here doing me.